Okay, so here's part two, natural and false color composites. And so this, this video um, and this part of the presentation is gonna go over these two sections of the chapter. Um, the one, the section three was called true color composites and section four is called false color composites. In both of these, um, we show you how to add a layer as an RGB color composite and then how to inspect the pixel values. So let's get into it. The, the theory here is that, again, our image is a stack of bands. And we're going to select three of these bands from the image to display. And each band, we're going to use a different color to display. And then these three colors are going to combine to give us a single additive color as a result. So let's talk this through a little bit. Typically, you're going to wind up grabbing a band that's a little bit lower in the stack to show with the red channel. So the idea is that we're going to use the red channel to display the data values that are stored in this band. And then we're going to use the green channel to display the data values that are um, stored in a second band. And we're going to use the blue color channel to display the data values that are stored in a third band. And then the these three color channels will combine to create new colors. When the data value that are stored in a pixel across the three bands are all low. So let's say we're displaying data from zero to 255. And in this case, this pixel has, a, has the minimum value in the band that we are showing with the red channel and in the band that we are displaying with the green channel and in the band that we are displaying with the blue channel. So the result is we get a black um, color. Similarly, when we are displaying a pixel that has a high value, let's say the max value 255 in the band that we're using for red and the band that we're using for green and the band that we're displaying with blue, you get a white color as a result. You get a red color when the pixel, when the data value that is stored at that pixel in the band that we are using the red channel to display is high while being low in the bands that are um, being displayed with the green and blue. And then similarly, you get a high, you get a blue color when it's low, low, high. You get a green color when it's low, high, low. And then you get these combinations like cyan and magenta and yellow that come from um, different kind of high, low combinations when it's high high in two of the bands and low in another, you get magenta, cyan, and, and yellow, depending on, on the combination. And you can also get lower saturation. So we'll talk a little bit more about added, additive color here in, a, in the next part, um, but this is just kind of quick little intro into the idea. So now let's go look at the code um, and I'm gonna go straight to the checkpoint again. Um, but if you have the repository, loaded, um, we're now going to be after F11B checkpoint, which is, uh, which is this one. And I'm going to um, comment out some stuff. So we don't need to keep printing and looking at these grayscale images. So I'm going to put my cursor here at 11 and then um, push down to about 54, hold the shift down, click 54, command slash, because I'm on a Mac, control slash if you're on a Windows. Then I'm going to click on 65, scroll down to the end, hold the shift down, click around 88, command slash or uh, control slash, and then run. Okay, and so what we should get here is an image that looks like this. Um, and it's an image that looks like Shanghai and this vicinity would look like if we were flying over it on June 6, 2000 from a plane and looking out the window, right? It's a it looks like the landscape looks when um, that we are used to looking at, <laughs> sorry. Um, and so what's going on to create that kind of an image? We're using this map add layer um, uh, command again, or this method that is saying, please show data from the first image, just kind of display um, data values from these three bands. So the main difference um, here compared to what we were doing last time is that we're now providing a list of three bands. 
And we're using, again, the minimum and maximum as we've defined before. We're saying, please kind of stretch the display values um, from 8,000 to 17,000 and use the red channel for B3, the green color channel for B2, and the blue color channel for B1. So let's look at what B3, B2, B1 actually represent by going and grabbing again the address to the collection that we're looking at if it's not up here and exploring the bands. So B3, this is the band that we are using the red color channel to display represents the reflectance um, of the red part of the visual, visible spectrum. B2 that we are using the green color channel to display represents the reflectance in the green part of the visible spectrum. And band and B1, which we're using the blue color channel to display, it represents the reflectance in the blue part of the visible spectrum. So we're basically using red to show red and green to show green and blue to show blue. And as a result, the way that these colors combine looks like the world we normally see when we walk around outside or look outside um, the window of a plane. Um, muddy, silty river water looks brown. Um, concrete and uh, uh, areas look white. Tarmac and asphalt looks black. Vegetation looks green. Um, it's, it's the world as you would expect it to look. Um, and, um, you know, dark, darker, clear water looks dark. And so, and you get that over here and over here. So this is, um, we're using the RGB channels kind of, kind of to do a natural mapping in the sense that we're using red colors to display data values uh, in the red part of the spectrum and so on. Um, and as a result, the, the image that we get looks like the world that we're used to. And then this is when the kind of the fun starts to, um, this is when I think things get kind of fun because what we can now do is use colors that we can see to represent parts of the spectrum that we cannot see, right? So we're gonna use the colors on our monitors to look at data that represents parts of the spectrum that are not normally visible to us. So I'm gonna uncomment 73 to 65 here. And so that should still be commented because we're adding a nurse false color um, uh, image. And we're just shifting the bands here where we're now gonna use the red channel to display data values in B4, the green color channel to display data values in B3, and the blue color channel to display data values in B2. And when we click run, we get this kind of cool image. Um, and there are no rose colored glasses that I know about that would quite make the world look like this, this very red kind of red image. Um, and so let's look at what we're doing here again by going back to, um, to this. And what you can see is that we are now using the red color channel to display reflectance in the near infrared part of the spectrum. So this is a spectrum that we don't normally see, but we are being able to see it because we are um, we're using a color on our monitor that we can see um, to, to represent it. So it gets a little strange because we're gonna use red for nearer and then we're using the green channel to display red light and we're using the blue channel to display green light. Um, but that's that's the basic idea. It's uh, and why it's called a, a false color composite because the mapping is no longer natural. Um, we're not using red for red and green for green and blue for blue. We're, we're creating a false color image, um, but it's one that allows us to um, see the world in a way that we can't see when we're just walking around. And that's, I think, what makes it kind of cool. So let's go ahead and use the inspector here to, to click on this and, and kind of figure it out. I'm gonna zoom into this little island here because it's bright red and I'm gonna click on it. And again, it might be a little confusing because these charts are gonna look the same for natural color and the false color. And that's because we are asking Earth Engine to add this entire image 
that is this stack of bands to the map, but we're just asking it to dis to use color to display the values in these three bands, right? So the only difference between this image and this image is the part of this chart that we're using colors to display. And so it's sometimes a little bit, I can look at false color um, and then look at this uh, over, I'm moving from the chart view to the um, kind of list uh, dictionary view here. And the idea is that in that pixel that I clicked, the value for B4 is quite a bit larger. It's more than twice as large as the value for B3 and B2. And it's because the we're using the red color channel for this and green for that and blue for that, that this pixel appears red because the red kind of dominates. And I would imagine that if we went in here and picked a pixel that was um, kind of, a, I don't know, this teal color and looked at, at it, what we find here um, in our B432 uh, is that the, the values are closer, but they're now higher in the, um, so we're using red here, green here, and blue here. So they're higher in the green and the blue than they are the red. And that's what's giving us this very muted, dark cyan kind of uh, um, look, um, which I think is that uh, color there. Okay, so keeping keeping going on this idea, we're gonna do a third one, highlight that. And um, so I put the cursor at 83 and then shift and the cursor at 75 and command slash to, to uncomment it. And now we're gonna add this short wave and I'm gonna back out because I'm really zoomed in. And once again, I'm using colors that we can see on the monitor to display parts of the spectrum that we cannot see. And it makes this kind of um, pretty fun, cool image. Um, and uh, what we're showing here is uh, B5, B4, and B2 as a shortwave false color. And if we go to this and collect and, and look at the bands, so now we are using um, uh, the red channel to display the shortwave infrared one, and we're using the green channel um, to display the um, shortwave infrared, um, I'm sorry, the near infrared band four, and uh, this is a was it a five four two? Um, yeah, so a five four two, and so it's going um, red, green, blue, right? And the result, if it's this bright green color, and we zoom in, is what we should see is five is that, four is quite a bit larger, and two is quite a bit lower. So it's appearing bright green because now the, the band four has the um, greatest value. Um, and, that's, uh, and that's why it appears green. Um, but now there are things that we, um, uh, there are other things that we can see in here, and uh, such as the kind of clear water um, and some of the siltation. And anyway, the um, hopefully you get the idea that what we are doing with this is using colors that we can display on the monitor to represent the amount of reflectance that are captured by this remote sensing instrument in parts of the spectrum that we can't normally see with our, with just with our eyes. Um, and that's the idea of these false color composites. Um, there's gonna be a couple of things you may notice. Some folks, uh, there are a, a number of different versions of the uh, SWIR false color. So sometimes um, people use the B7 band um, rather than the B5 band, which if you look at this is a, um, B7 is a is another short wave, um, and you'll talk more about these uh, bands and the electromagnetic spectrum later. Um, but that's the basic idea um, here. And so let's go back to the slides, and there's that. So we talked about the true color composite, the color infrared. Um, it looks like I zoomed down on a different island in the chapter, but that's the that's the idea there. 
Um, and there's an island that I zoomed in on to look at the um, what we just demoed, different place. There's the shortwave infrared comparison of the two. And, um, and then there's this app that I just made to quickly go through um, that will allow you to, if you load an image, to, um, to select a band and then begin to play with different stretch enhancements to, um, to get your best contrast out of, the, uh, out of the band. So let's say we're gonna work with B4 and I just go through it and say, I'm gonna stretch this from 20,000 to um, about 8,000. And so I will do that quickly. And that gets uh, that image stretched. Um, I'm gonna do B3 and again, use this to look at the 15,000 to about, let's say 8,000. And then I'll do B2, where I, I think I have a smaller range, say 14 to 18 here. And so this is uh, just providing a kind of interactive way to do um, more precise stretch, uh, to do st customized stretch enhancements for each band, um, and then add the RGB so you can see what a uh, the color composite would look like. Um, and then I believe I've also got this set up where you can click on a location. So what you'll find often is it's nice to not draw things automatically because it um, loads faster. And now I believe if you click on a location, it will show you the, the RGB chart. So showing you that in that location I clipped, the reflectance is higher there than here, than in the red channel than in the green and the blue, and that's why it's appearing red. So this is just a quick little app to, to help people um, play with different com band combinations, um, explore the histograms, and um, practice with um, stretch enhancement um, to um, get good, nice, uh, nice crisp images, which is just kind of a, a bonus uh, stuff that's not in the book, but um, stuff that I uh, like to make um, to help people learn how to work with, with uh, this imagery. Okay, so I think that's what I've got for that section. So there's that.